You are listening to the podcast of the Maciasz Korvinas Collegium, the largest talent management institute in Hungary. If you want to know more about our mission, please look up our English website at mcc.hu slash en or check out our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter channels. For interesting articles and analysis of our professors, external contributors, and students, look up our knowledge base at korvinak.hu slash en. Welcome to yet another episode of the MCC podcast series, the Matthias Corvinus Collegium podcast series. And um, uh, my name is Hubertus Ruel, and I'm very happy to have as our honored guest, Mr. Bruno Bobone from Portugal. How are you? Well, actually, luckily, I'm, we are flying again and visiting people again, which is very important because relations are the most important things in our life. Although we can share all the opinions through systems like the one we are using now, it's much better to be together. So I'm trying to fly as much as I can. <laughs> Today, um, I'm very happy to have Mr. Bobone as our guest since Mr. Bobone is the president of the board of directors of the Pinto Basta Group. Um, and that is a um, Portuguese leading um, family owned business in the maritime services and transport and is already around for more than 10 generations. It was established in 1771. Please correct me later on, Mr. Bobone, if I'm wrong. But at least first to introduce you to the audience of this podcast. Um, But next to being the president of um, the Pinto Basto Group, the Pinto Basto Group is, is um, active in the maritime services and transport, um, Mr. Bobone was also the European president of the International Christian Union of Business Executives, uh, the world vice president of the International Christian Union um, of Business Executives, Uh, and currently, uh, but please later on, uh, Mr. Boboni, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, you're the um, uh, one of the members of the board of that um, uh, union. Um, this International Union of Christian um, Business Executives abbreviated, it's called uh, Unia PAC, um, and its aim is to promote Christian social thought Within the world, uh, within the world of business and society of today, and that makes Mr. Bilbone a very, very interesting guest. So, on the one hand, he's the president of a family-owned business that has been around for more than 10 generations. On the other hand, he is very much active in promoting Christian social thought in the world of business and society. And in this interview, in MCC's podcast series, this episode, I would like to have that great conversation with Mr. Bobone about the challenges of adhering to and promoting Christian social thought in today's business world. Once again, Mr. Bobone, thank you so much for accepting our invitation. Thank you. Um, of course, you know, I try to introduce you to uh, the audience, uh, the listeners of this podcast series. Um, in this interview, I would like to talk with you about three things. First of all, um, there may be listeners to this podcast who may not be familiar to Christian social thought. So I would talk with you a bit like what exactly is it? Secondly, about the challenges of Christian social thought in business of today, uh, today's business world and society. And thirdly, about your own experiences. First of all, Christian social thought, that may be for you and me a familiar topic. However, for many people, it may sound like what exactly is Christian social thought? Could you please explain What exactly is Christian social thought? Well, are the basic uh, principles and values of uh, human life, because uh, uh, the Christian so social thought is based on the, uh, the Christianity, on the, the word, the word of, uh, of the Lord, but basically focused the interest, uh, the care of people is about the human uh, person which means that every, the, the human person has to be in the center of everything. 
And in economy, in our companies, in our uh, working days, we still have to keep this in mind. The most important thing we have is the human person. So we have to do everything based on the benefits for this person. And that means that we have to make people participate, that we have to uh, uh, share with them information, the uh, concern. Think that the, the, the goods that we have are there to be used by, to be benef benefited by everybody. So what we want is to build up a society that is based on developing uh, growth, economic uh, growth, uh, wealth, but also worries about the distribution of this wealth. It's very important that we think that uh, we have companies, we have the economy to serve the people. And this is the most important thing we have. And to serve them means that we have to share with them the wealth that we created, but also that we have to make them participate in the decisions of their lives. It's very important that they feel they are also responsible for what's happening, but also that they have the opportunity of sharing their opinions, sharing their views, in order that uh, the decisions are taken with the consideration of the people. So basically, the principles and values of the social uh, thoughts of the church are basically uh, um, sharing the values of human life. Thank you. Yeah, that uh, sounds uh, to many people obviously very uh, attractive and very like, wow, isn't that what we all would like? Um, and what we all would love to uh, be working on. Um, but if you then, let's move already to those challenges. What do you consider or what is what are, in your view, the challenges in today's world that make it perhaps either easier or harder to work along uh, Christian social principles in business? The main thing is uh, uh, we have to understand that normally we are afraid of taking the right decisions. Uh, if you really work based on these values and the principles, you get better results because you have the capacity of creating motivation with your own people. You know that people have one objective in life, is happiness. And if we contribute to give the opportunity of uh, making a path towards happiness, people get more motivated. And motivated people are more productive people. And if the people feel that the company where they work are defending them, are giving them the, the, the opportunities of developing a proper life, it means that they will be happy with the company. They will defend that company and they will produce more. And by producing more, we will have more to share. So I think this is a, a, a positive circle that we have to start. And we don't do that basically because we are afraid to compromise. We all know that it's written in the books, in management books, that we should do this. But in the end, people are afraid to take the move because they are afraid they might lose instead of winning. I think the basic thing that we have, and uh, John Paul II was his first uh, phrase to the world, is, was don't be afraid. Because being afraid is compromising your capacity of doing good. The interesting thing, of course, is there is in the world of business um, and that something that you may experience in your role as president of a board of uh, Pinto Basta Group as well, the um, tension between the financial performance and uh, call it the social performance uh, or the, the happiness of people. You said clearly when you work along Christian social thought principles, um, a business performs better if I understood you correctly, indeed, right? Uh, which mm -hmm. is, um, of course, a very interesting thing for people around the world who work in business to hear. Uh, but how do you see that tension between, do you see a tension between the financial and call it the social performance uh, of a business? Or do you see those things to uh, not to, to be at a, call it a tensious relationship? No tension at all between the financial and the social. The problem is uh, um, the time. If you look 
to uh, um, an immediate decision and an immediate result, you always forget about the important things. And that is what is running business nowadays and probably our lives. We are too much focused on tomorrow. And what we should be looking is uh, towards one year, two years, three years, five years, because our lives don't end tomorrow. Tomorrow is just a little detail on our lives, and we should look on a long spectrum, because then you will find that financial decisions and social decisions coincide. They are part of the same benefit, on the, of the same profit, of the same good result. So the thing is not among uh, between financial and social, is that among tomorrow and five years. And uh, you mentioned uh, on the start of this interview that my company is uh, 250 years of age, which is true. And if you go to the stock exchange, I would uh, try... If you try to find companies with 200 years, you'll have a very, very difficult time because uh, they're not there. That means that we should look for the long term instead of looking for the short term. And I think this is the biggest issue. It's not the financial versus uh, social. That They are complementary. They are part of the same good. The problem is the time. And, and, and time means we should not focus on tomorrow but the long run um, and, and, and not go for the short wins and the short term um, goals. Yes, yeah. because you're talking about people and uh, uh, people have one life to live. They don't have different lives every day. So you have to think about everybody in their own lives. So you have to think about them in the long term and trying to provide them capa the capacity of doing their own path towards happiness means that you have to think about them in five years' time, not in tomorrow. And you have to concern about them. You have to take care of the people that are around you because they are the ones that will defend you when you have a problem, when you have a crisis. If you don't defend them now, on the moment of the crisis, they will just go away. And that means, and that is probably why you won't find these companies with long-term activity in the stock exchange, in the, the, the places where you take decisions on the short term. I think that this is the most important thing. People are the important thing in our lives. And this is what is going to give you the good results. Maybe you won't be the richest tomorrow, but you will be growing wealth on a long, long way. How does that uh, UNIAPAC, you're currently a member, but you were the European president, Correct me if I'm wrong, and you were the world vice president of, of, of Uni, uh, UNIAPAC, uh, of that, that Christian Union of Business Executives. Um, do you find it, how is it to attract new members or young business executives, perhaps who are not familiar with Catholic social thought? Uh, how does that work? How does UNIAPAC approach this? I think it's getting uh, more and more uh, easier to get the, the young generation because the young generation is very much concerned about the social, about the, their own lives. They are uh, overcoming our errors of thinking about wealth as the ultimate objective. Of course, wealth is very important, but it's not the objective in itself. Wealth is important to give the opportunity of developing people, of developing societies. And the, the new generation they are looking into this, into the development of their own lives, of their own societies. So it will become much easier to get them involved. Actually, I can tell you that most of the, the associations around the world are getting a new generation coming uh, to assist, to attend, to, to participate in their own uh, activities. And this is giving us a very, very strong movement uh, in, the, in the companies nowadays. Of course, the economy of Francis that Pope Francis are, is uh, promoting is also a very important thing because the Pope said that we have to change the way the economy has been uh, run in the past decades. And he's right because in the past decades we tried to get as rich as one could be. And this showed that this is not good for societies. You get a, a, a big... Uh, uh, difference between the ones that are richest and the ones that are the normal, the average. 
And uh, it's not because it's wrong to be rich. It's because you need societies to have uh, uh, relations. And if you bring, if you build a big gap between the two realities, you cannot develop relations. And this is what is getting uh, to societies. We are uh, uh, disrupting uh, societies. We are facing ma in many countries that people are going to the extremes and they don't meet in the middle. That means that we have to change the way society is developing. And the economy has a big role on this matter, which means that we have to invest a lot on the economy to make the sharing bigger. What would it mean for, um, you know, in my simple observation, but that's, uh, I would say, many companies uh, also in today's world um, still seem to, in the end, uh, respond to what I call this shareholder value maximization uh, to, to stock market value. Um, and you said already along a a lot about it, like you should look at the long run, not at the short term. It means also that sometimes what I call corporate governance systems and practices are not fully adhering or not in line with the principles of Christian social thought. Um, how are you dealing with this within the Christian Union of Business Executives? Um, does that mean that the members and their companies uh, clearly put in their strategies, in their corporate policies, different values and things than companies that do not adhere to Christian social thought? How does that work in practice? Well, again, we come to the same uh, problem. It's a, a matter of uh, short term, long term. Uh -huh. if you, uh, when you say that uh, we are trying to get the best for our shareholders, uh, I will discuss with you what is the best for our shareholders. Is to get the biggest result tomorrow or in five years' time. Because if you get the best result tomorrow and the company goes broke in the next year, I'm not sure it's the best thing for the, the, the shareholder. Well, actually, I'm sure it's not. So that means that the, what is wrong is that people are only opening the first page. They're not looking for the whole book. And if you look for the whole book, Again, it coincides the interest of the shareholder with the interest of giving the best to our company. And that is, again, the problem. The problem is not between shareholders and employers, employees and people. It's among short-term and long-term. Because it's not good for a shareholder to get the biggest results possible today. Uh, it's the, big, the best result for a shareholder to keep his company growing and developing. Uh, there are two types of shareholders. Uh, the, the, the shareholders of a company that uh, are there to stay, to remain shareholders, and the others that uh, try to uh, play it in the stock exchange. They have different interests, of course. If you're in the stock exchange, you're not talking about shareholders as the shareholder was established. They are gambling with values. And then of course, they are interested in the short term. Also, uh, managers in companies m many times want to show their immediate success to the shareholders. And this is what we have to avoid because these two interests are not promoting the continuity of the company and the true shareholders of the company. And this is what has to be clear. We have to share with the shareholders uh, the true uh, value of their company in five years, in 10 years' time, and then they will decide on the proper way to go forward. So again, it's not a matter of uh, fighting, it's a matter of uh, explaining and be, tell the truth to the people, because we are normally only hearing about tomorrow, we're not hearing about the next day, the next year, and the next uh, decade. This is what we have to enforce. The, the other thing is, we are seeing many uh, times people trying to get the right values into their companies, basically by making statements and introducing uh, uh, rules in their companies. This is not working. You saw that with governance. Most of the companies that were bankrupted on the crisis of 2008 had all the governance 
written in their own uh, structure of documents in the company. What we need to do is to teach people, to make them believe what they say, to make them leave what they say. This is the important thing. Again, for that you need time. Time is the most important thing. To have time means that you have to be courage, courageous to take the decisions of not taking the profit today, but looking into the true life of your business in a different, totally different way. Thank you. Wow. I mean, I, 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 I feel and I, I, for the listeners to this podcast, um, once again, we're unfortunately not meeting face to face, but via MS Teams. Um, but anyway, because Mr. Bobone is in Lisbon, that's also where uh, you reside, if I'm correct. Uh, but anyway, so we're using technology indeed to have this conversation. Um, your family owned business. I mean, how did that emerge in your family to be so convinced that this is the way to go? That was, how did that work in your family business? Yes, it, it comes from the very beginning because we always thought that in, the important thing were the people around us. We have a phrase that we have in our company that says that uh, to become Pinto Vasto, which is the name of the family, you don't need to be born Pinto Vasto. You just have to work one hour in this company. And this is the, 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 the theme that we have in our uh, main uh, drive for the, for the company. People are the important thing. You, if you can count on people, you will survive. If you can count on people, you will have the future of your company. So to do that, you have to think about them, treat them properly, and make them family. This is the only way you can go forward. Um, in a number of the parts of our conversation, you mentioned we need to teach people. If I look at business schools or universities um, or uh, programs like economics, um, I'm not always sure whether what you're saying and what Christian social thought tries to promote is also shared in, 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 in economics classes or business management classes. What's your What's your experience? Well, I think that, again, people have been afraid of stating what they, what are their beliefs, because it was uh, very, accept, very well accepted that uh, the maximization of profits was the big issue of uh, economy and enterprises. I'm uh, not in agreement with that. I think that we have to share the values. We have to fight for the values, because the values are the ones that are giving as the capacity of development. So I think that we have to be courageous. We have to tell the truth, but we have uh, uh, to start to move ourselves in the middle of the business community. We have left the place for the, the big people that showed that they were the, the, the champions, but in the end, most of these champions, they fall down, but we, and we remain, we are still in the business. So we have to go there and shout our truth to the world. And we haven't been doing this. So I think that again, uh, we've been afraid and we have to lose this uh, position. We have to be courageous and we have to show our example and make sure that people believe that this is the way forward. Thank you. As a, a final issue in our conversation here for this podcast series, uh, we live in the so-called post-COVID world or hoping to get out of the COVID pandemic. Uh, however, we're also, for the listeners to this uh, MCC podcast, yet in uh, quite another crisis. Um, the situation in Ukraine, the war in Ukraine, uh, which at least I call it, uh, but perhaps the Russians would not. <laughs> Mr. Putin does seem uh, to have a different view. Um, what does the post-COVID world and this situation in Ukraine, which may affect the world economy and the world of business, many businesses are withdrawing from Russia. How does that, um, yeah, what does that, will, do you think that will challenge maybe businesses 
to adhere to Christian social thought or may it even help businesses if they really believe and, and keep on sticking to these values? Well, I think that the COVID showed us that people are more important than business because we decided to defend people uh, even risking business. And that was a, a very important decision in the world. We should take the opportunity of uh, learning with this decision. In fact, this second uh, crisis, this terrible situation in Ukraine, has shown that uh, companies are more available consider people before business because they are taking the, the right decisions to uh, try to support what they think is the right thing uh, in Ukraine. So I think that uh, we may have an opportunity of changing our minds. We have seen that the economy of the, the, the low price is not in itself a good decision because you make low prices but uh, um, Producing in places where you don't pay social security, where you don't have minimum uh, conditions. And that is why you get the, the low price. But by doing that, you gave all your capacity to other countries and you lost the capacity of defending yourself. Again, and on the other hand, in Ukraine, you have seen something very, very special. The courage of that people is something that we should learn from them and we should take as a lesson in our lives. They were so courageous. They are doing something so special that we have to also learn that for our day to day. So I think that uh, the post-COVID uh, economy is more um, developed in terms of thinking about important things, to have the capacity of putting the person in the center of everything, to thinking that uh, uh, sharing is very important and companies coming out of Russia, they are sharing the concern for other people. So I think that, yes, we have a big opportunity. The problem is that our memory is very, very short. So let's see if we can manage to keep these very important ideas and decisions in our lives for the future. Mr. Bobone, may I thank you so much for um, being with us. Uh, we're using technology once again to the listeners of this podcast. Um, but I think your message and what the Christian Union um, the International Union of Christian Business Executives, U UNIAPAC. I could refer easily to the website of UNIAPAC and uh, people will learn more about it. Is doing a great job, uh, personally, I believe. Um, and I really hope that this po podcast may inspire many young and older uh, business executives to really uh, learn more about UNIAPAC and the Christian social thought. Thank you so much, listeners, to this episode. Thank you very much. And it was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this MCC podcast episode. For further media content, please look up our English website at mcc.hu slash en or look for us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If you want to read more by our professors, external contributors, and students, check out our knowledge base at corvinac.hu slash en.